The Diamond has had an uneventful past few months, but he wants to step out of the inactivity and get fighting. The former interim lightweight champion is finally over that huge win against Conor McGregor, and also wants to move on from the defeat he faced against Charles Oliveira. And the only thing stopping that from happening is a green light from UFC. So who will Poirier fight next? Watch on for all the details. First up, how are the past 15 months like for Poirier? And how does the future look? Within the past 15 months, Poirier has achieved quite a lot, and even faced faced a few disappointments while he was at it. At UFC 257, the American Beast managed to become the first UFC fighter to serve a humiliating defeat to Conor McGregor himself. And then, sometime later, he crushed him a second time at UFC 264. So much so that McGregor was left with a broken leg. So Poirier had pretty much been soaring in the skies, up until that Charles Oliveira fight came. Because at UFC 269, Poirier realized he was too weak in front of the Brazilian lightweight champ. He was forced to submit after struggling for almost three rounds, and the ultimate loss came through a rear naked choke once Oliveira got onto his back in the third round. The damage began in the second round when Oliveira went beast mode on his opponent and broke his spirit. While Poirier did try to cope, perhaps his skills just weren't enough to last any longer against the guy whose belt he was after. The fight obviously concluded on a bad note for Poirier, and he must have been stripped from that initial happiness on the McGregor win. But all that's in the past now, the bad and the good. Poirier is finally ready for the challenge his fighting career brings him now. Next. In fact, he's asking for one himself. Diamond took to Twitter in recent days and expressed his desire to step back into the octagon as simply as he could. He said, I want to fight, and things were made clear. So it all comes down to the decision by UFC officials that will reveal the fighter they see fit for someone like Poirier. And the fans have some theories. Well, the most obvious contender is Nate Diaz, whom Poirier is engaging with on social media himself. For the ultimate comeback, Poirier thinks Diaz is the perfect opponent for his next match, and the Stockton slapper also seems to be interested in such a match. Even when he has a rumored matchup with Jake Paul, he's more interested in facing Poirier instead. It's still unclear which weight class the two UFC superstars will compete in, and exactly when this fight will take place. But seeing all the engagement on social media, and also some instances with the media, it seems that a Poirier versus Diaz face-off will soon become a reality. During an episode of The Fight with Teddy Atlas, Poirier said about a potential matchup, no contract has been signed yet, but if this does go through, I'm going to take it. This would be super short notice. I already looked at myself in the mirror. I spoke to my wife and my boxing coach, people I talk to regularly. So that should count as something. Other than that, it's possible that Poirier will be offered an even better opponent. We're talking about a potential rematch with Oliveira and a second chance at that lightweight title. But as things are right now, that has very slim chances. Now, other defeats in Poirier's UFC career. Unlike many of his fellows, Poirier hasn't had the smoothest UFC career. As much as he'd like it to be the case, his record is stained with some major losses, but that doesn't mean he hasn't had his good days. Here's a summary of Poirier's UFC career ever since he joined the organization all the way back in 2009. The initial year was great for Poirier. Perhaps he was young and in his prime and having newly made it to the UFC, fueled with energy and determination. It wasn't until 2010 that Poirier faced his very first heartbreak inside the cage against Danny Castillo, and that loss also broke his eight-win streak with the UFC. He took that moment to learn about his weaknesses, because soon Poirier was back in shape and ready to crush some arrogant opponents. A career highlight came when Poirier defeated Max Holloway via submission at UFC 143. And perhaps that blew his ego too much, because the Diamond lost to the Korean Zombie in his very next fight at UFC on Fuel TV 3. Poirier went on to face many losses against fighters like Cub Swanson, Michael Johnson, Khabib Nurmagomedov, and even McGregor once. Perhaps it was that defeat that he avenged against McGregor during their most recent face-off. And he did it twice too, so he must have left all the bitterness behind. The Oliveira loss is arguably the biggest heartbreak Poirier has faced in the octagon. To get a title shot and miss it, that's gotta hurt. Next, in other UFC news, Alexander Volkanovsky continues to impress, declared the GOAT by Israel Adesanya. It was one legend gushing about another on his personal YouTube channel recently. Adesanya has had only good things to say about Volkanovsky after his third successive title defense against the Korean zombie Chan Sung Yung at the recent UFC 273. And when a superstar like Adesanya compliments someone, you know it's real. Talking to his millions of followers, he said that Volkanovski has earned the title of the greatest of all time after his most recent performance. Volkanovski brought a crushing defeat over Jung, who couldn't make it past 48 points against the Australians 138. That's right, that's how one-sided it all was. To remind you, Volkanovski had put his title on the line for the third time. The pressure was definitely on for him too. Jung is an underdog who can bring some unexpected moves on match day. Not to forget, he's skilled 
skilled in multiple kinds of martial arts, giving him a special edge. But Volkanovski was having none of that and crushed Jung to the point where it might take some rebuilding to bounce back from that. On the win, the Australian said he was happy with the way things ended during the fourth round, but the match could be kept even briefer had Jung not had the determination of a lion. Volkanovski also admitted that his hands were hurting as he landed jab after jab and punch after punch all over Jung's body because Jung kept getting back up and showing that he had the strength to resist some more. The brilliance of the fight hasn't been lost on anyone, and Volkanovski is pretty much in praise paradise right now, with fans, fighters, and even UFC seniors congratulating him and declaring him their inspiration. Such is the hype that some think Volkanovski might be able to take on the current welterweight champion, Kamaru Usman. We don't know how close that is to the truth, but consider this. Volkanovski has only lost once in his UFC career, and why wouldn't he want to keep that streak going? Fans are hoping to see a Kamaru versus Volkanovski face-off soon. Up next, Alex Oliveira leaves the UFC. The Brazilian former UFC fighter recently left the promotion after appearing in a total of 22 fights. The news was confirmed by UFC officials, who revealed it to MMA Fighting. Apparently, it's UFC that has decided not to renew his contract after a final fight and loss against Kevin Holland. The veteran's first fight came against Gilbert Burns, who managed to defeat him. Following that, Oliveira went on an impressive seven-win streak. But alas, he couldn't maintain it for long and soon started facing technical problems inside the octagon. And unfortunately, the 34-year-old fell even harder in recent years after dropping four separate fights and losing to fighters like Miko Price, Randy Brown, and Shavkat Rachmanov. He's no longer a part of the UFC fighter ring, and that saddened many fans. They took to Twitter when news of his contract not being re-signed broke out and expressed their love and appreciation for him. Some are hopeful that the UFC will consider bringing him back soon. Lastly, fighters to be paid bonuses in Bitcoin. And another exciting development in the world of UFC is the new form of bonus payments that will be made to fighters for upcoming pay-per-view fights. The organization has teamed up with Crypto.com, which will reward fighters with fan bonuses in cryptocurrency. Three prizes have been set, starting from 10,000 going up to 30,000. Apparently, fans will get to vote on their favorite fighters on the Crypto.com official site. Then, following matches, the fighters will be rewarded according to the votes they receive. It's an exciting system of rewards that will engage both fighters and fans. Besides, crypto is the heat these days, and it's only fair for the UFC to get on the trend and form some associations with the world of cryptocurrency. So, smart move on the part of the organization. That was it for today's video. What are your expectations from the upcoming UFC event? Let us know in the comments below. And make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, where we post similar videos quite frequently. We'll see you in the next one.